I do want to uh, give him an introduction here. So C Coach Burt has been my my professional coach um, for, I don't know, not, not actually that long, but uh, probably about six months, seven months now, uh, and has just had a dramatic impact on my development. Um, I'll let him talk about his story a little bit, and then we'll get into some Q&A. But uh, I'm really excited to have him as, as a part, as a, as a tool, as a resource for everybody here that's a part of this team. Uh, because he, he, this, this, is a, this is a guy who's, who's just making incredible impacts on people every single day uh, and is speaking on some of the world's biggest stages. So, uh, Coach, I, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself to the team and just tell a little bit about your story. And then we, I know some of us probably have some questions, and I know I have a few I'd love for you to work with us on. So, uh, without further ado. Well, thank, thank you for saying that. And I know you guys are less interested in, in my story and more interested in how I can help you make money, right? Uh, and that's what I'd be interested in too. And I hope that you just know that the impact I'm having on Sean uh, and his brother is ha has a lot to do because they're very coachable. And when you think about a good coach, a good coach helps you find and fill your missing structures. I like to say a good coach is a professional reminder. There's things you know you should be doing, but for some reason you're not doing them, right? And I spent a decade of my life building a national powerhouse women's basketball team. I became the number one coach in the country. Uh, my team were going to win seven of nine championships uh, in the state of Tennessee. And I really, what I really learned during that period was how to activate what we call the prey drive in a person, which is how to flip the switch. So no matter what gear you're clicking on, over the last 28 years, I've really become a specialist at helping you find another gear. And it could be taking you from making 50,000 to 150, from 150 to 400, from 400 to a million, from a million to 5 million. And I've done it with some of the biggest people in the world. Okay. And I've written 16 books, um, several bestsellers. I've spoken at 10X. If you guys follow Cardone, I've spoken at 10X at Mandalay Bay to 10,000 people. And I have been coaching people that do 100 million a year all the way up to 400 million a year. Uh, so I also coach baby stars, people that are literally just getting started. And that may be, you may say, I'm a little baby star, but I got a big star potential, right or wrong, right? You got big star potential. And so what I do is I bring a structure to the equation to help you look at your business and go, this is where I'm losing money. This is where I'm leaving money on the table. And many times we don't even know what we don't even know. We don't know that we're, we could do a better job explaining our value when we're on the phone or at a, at a door. We don't know that we can work different tactics and strategies to get generate more leads. We don't know that if we followed up better and, 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 and worked our networks that we could generate more referrals out of our current book of business. You know, and I'll give you a real life example is there was a person that came to my best friend's house this past Sunday. I happened to be over there. My wife was out of town and he was a door to door salesman and he was selling security. My friend had already made a decision. He was going to buy the security system. He'd already made a decision. When the, when the door to door person walked in, he said, I know exactly what I want. I know what I'm ready to spend. Let's go, right? Now, what he didn't know is that I also needed a new security system because I don't like the one I currently have. And I could introduce him to probably 10 more people that need security systems. But he never really, he wasn't trained properly. He didn't know how to extract referrals out of the current person. He didn't take buying cues, as Sean and I will talk about. He didn't take referral cues. So he really could have got 10 deals out of the one deal if he had just been better coached. Does that make sense? And this is, this is really where coaching becomes very valuable because you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. And what happens is you go out and do it and do it and do it, and there could be a better way of doing it. So what I learned by building championship teams is how to enter engineer a person to win. So at 31 years old, I retired from athletic coaching. All I've been doing for the last 13 years is coaching business people. And the way Sean saw me is I was one of the keynote speakers with Ed Milet and Tim Grover at the door to door conference in, in Utah. And that's where he first saw me. Now he was one of the smart door to door people that actually signed up for me to be his coach. And there were some dumb door-to-door -door people there that didn't sign up for me to be their coach. And that's on them, okay? Uh, so since I've been coaching Sean, he would tell you he's closed more deals. He's got more focus. He's thinking 10 times bigger, okay? And he's, he's, he's got more confidence than maybe he's ever had. And he's already confident to do when I started coaching him. 
right? So that's what I want to do with your team is I want to help you find and fill your missing structures. I want to help you articulate. And today specifically, we're going to talk about prey drive and do some Q&A because that's really my specialty. Prey drive is an instinctual ability inside of you to see something and go get it. Like an animal has a prey drive, right? A dog has a prey drive. And a dog's ability to stalk, capture, and kill prey. Sound like a good salesperson? <laughs> well, you have that in you. It's primal. It is your ability to go get it, okay? Now, but here's what happens in humans. Humans have a prey drive, but here's what I see. There's three components to it. Number one, it has to be activated. Okay. And in many people, it's not activated. How many of you know a person right now? It's got all kinds of potential. It got more potential, but you can't flip the switch. Right. All right. It could be you. Maybe say, I'm talking, you're talking to me. Right. Number two, there has to be a persistence to the prey drive, meaning the ability to show up every day, man. With the, with the ability to show up with an incredible mindset and disposition and attacker's mindset, there's got to be a persistence to the prey drive. And number three, there's got to be an intensity to the prey drive. Okay, now I took an ownership stake in a new gym called F45. F45 is the fastest growing gym franchise in the world today. There's 2,000. Mark Wahlberg was a big early investor in F45, so they're growing very rapid. It's like a cross between Orange Theory and CrossFit. And it's functional fitness, 45 minutes, incredible workout. I burn like 700 calories every workout. Now, here's the deal. I put out to the market that people could come work out with me. Come work out with Coach Burke. First day, people are excited. They're all in there. They got their headbands on. They work out like crazy. Day two, 30% of them dropped off. Day three, 50% of them dropped off. By the sixth day, I worked out six straight days. We were down to one, one little dude was still stuck. Just one person. And I'm like, well, what happened to all the people that wanted to work out? What happened to all the people that wanted to get in better shape? Well, they had a little flicker of prey drive. They at least had the guts to get started. Right, Sean? They at least had the guts to get up at 5 a.m. and be there at 6, but they could only do it for one or two days, man. And I said, look, the biggest difference between me and you is I get up every day, and I fight through my feelings every day, and I find a way to win every day. And my prey drive has to be activated and reactivated every day. Everybody see that? So, so what happens is I'm at the point in my life that I can activate and reactivate my own prey drive. Okay. But very few people are at that point. It's taken me 28 years to get here, guys. Most people have to have an external factor to activate their prey drive. Because if I ask you what activates your drive, right? Evan may say, oh, it's in me. It's in here. What if I told you even the top professionals in the world many times need an external factor to activate that drive? They need a competition, right? They need, a, they need somebody to say they're not good enough. They need a rejection of some kind. They need a fear of loss. They need to wake up and feel like they're going to be broke and can't feed their kids if they don't make a sale today. They need an environment, which is what you guys are trying to create here. They need exposure to new thought patterns and big time people. Okay. They may, they may even need some embarrassment. Like there's days that I look at what I've done in my life. Uh, and I'm embarrassed, man, John, I, I I've done a lot in my life in 43 years, man, but I'm still embarrassed compared to what I'm capable of doing. When I look at some of the people I compete with, I know that I'm as good as or better than them. So why are they earning, uh, X number of millions of dollars more than me? What do they have that I don't have? What are they doing that I'm not doing? Like, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, man, I'm still playing small. Like some people look at me and think, man, you're playing big. In my opinion, I'm playing small in comparison. Like, like right? Like, like my little jet that I have, ain't, it don't compare to Ed Milet's jet, right? Now, I told him it's my little starter jet, okay? And, 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 and you got to have a starter jet before you get the big jet, right? But my point is, I'm always looking up at somebody else going, man, I'm embarrassed compared to what that dude's doing because he's not any better than me. What is he doing that I'm not doing? So to me, I need these games to play to activate my prey drive. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll almost thrive when somebody tells me I'm not good enough or you're too short or I don't like your bald head or you're too Southern or whatever. Like I almost like, thank you. I needed that, man. That is what I needed to go get, make 10 more calls today. That's what I needed to make a million more dollars. That's what I needed to push harder through it. So, I have become a, a, a master 
at the activation of prey drive in people. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. So, Sean, we're going to play some pitch and catch. Sean has been well-schooled, and Coach, let me unmute you, has been well-schooled uh, in my methodology of prey drive activation. And I'm saying P-R-E-Y, drive, prey like predatory, okay? And I, don't, I know I don't want to put it in that context, but, but primal, that's what I want you thinking. You have a primal instinct to go get something, okay? Something that you see or in the mind. Everybody see that? What happens is that has been beat out of you your whole life, right or wrong. Like I have an eight-year-old and an eight-week-old. And my eight-year-old is, man, she's relentless. Like she does not take no for an answer. She will work to make a sale 47 different ways. She'll work me. She'll work her mom. She'll work her grandmama. Like she'll pit us against each other. Like it's crazy, man. And my wife is always like, dang. I'm like, no, no, no. Do not, do not take that out of her. When she's 25 years old, she may be the number one door-to-door -door person in the world with that kind of mindset, with that kind of spirit. Well, what happens is, what do we tell kids? Stop, don't do it, slow down. Like we actually beat that prey drive out of people to where then they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to ask you for the business and I didn't really mean to ask you for the sale and I didn't want to hurt your feelings. And what I'm trying to do is reactivate that in you, that drive that you had or activate it to a higher frequency. So we're going to play some pitch and catch on this. Sean can ask questions. Any of you guys can ask questions with me. And we're going to unpack the prey drive concept. It's not P-R-A-Y. Because somebody told me, they said, man, I thought it was prey drive. I just sit around and pray and hope that things get better. And I said, well, you haven't read the book of James. Because in the Bible, it talks about action. Faith without action. Okay? You have to do something. Okay? And a lot of people don't do enough. Uh, so, so let's talk about that. Sean, so let's play some pitch and catch. Yeah, so uh, uh, thanks, Coach. Uh, so I guess first first question I think would be for we have a lot of new people or a lot of newer people. This may even be for most of of the people on the call. This may be their first sales job. It might be the first time that they're ever, um, you know, getting into initiating right. And I and I think the first thing when we talk about prey drive is you have to be ready to get up right. Everybody's virtual. We're not coming into an office every day is getting yourself prepared to, to initiate, to be resourceful, to go get it and start setting up consultations, start uh, initiating with people. So what do you recommend as far as for somebody to wake up their internal prey drive before they start getting on the phones, before they start engaging on social media or however it is that they're gonna start to, to do that part of your selling system, uh, what, are some, what are some ways that you're able to get somebody or get your team prepared to get on the phones and start really kind of hustling uh, every single day? All right, I want you to think about this. Uh, every day, this prey drive has to be reactivated. How many, how many, of, you, how many of you had a, 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 have had a tough day in the last couple of days? We're managers, right? Like I had to do commit to a $30,000 or $40,000 agreement. We started the agreement. And then yesterday decided, no, nope, I don't want to do the agreement. Well, well, that cost me 40000 right there, right? One, one email cost me 40000 And because people are so freaked out right now and scared, a lot of people are moving into a defensive position. So there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't want to cancel my coaching or whatever, and it ain't got anything to do with me. Here's what they say. Man, I love you, but I'm broke, right? And I'm like, well, you ain't, you're not in there getting coached every day. You wouldn't be broke if you got in there and got the information you need, right? Does that make sense? But yesterday was a tough day on me. I talked for 14 hours and I was a little uh, deflated at the end of the day. I helped a lot of people, but man, I just took a few blows yesterday. Y'all, you ever had that day like that? Well, I have days like that too. And I do millions of dollars of sales, but it still don't hurt any less. So I kind of went to bed, uh, woke up this morning and I said, man, what do I do to reactivate my prey drive this morning? Right? What do I do this morning? And I look at the whole person. I want to feed my whole person. So what I do is I very first thing I get up, I listen to something typically spiritual. Okay. Cause I'm a faith-based person. So I listen to something spiritual, feed my spirit. That's my spirit. That's my confidence. Then I exercise, get my body in a state. Okay. So I'm in downtown Nashville. It's beautiful here. I went out for a long walk this morning. I typically go to F45 when I'm in, in my home city and work out hard for 45 minutes. Then I see my family. That's emotional. So I've worked out my body, my mind, right? 
then, then I learned, then on my way into the work, I listen to something on business, typically something 15 minutes. Everybody needs one person they, that they really buy into on business, right? Somebody who could just, would just listen to them for 10 minutes, get you all jacked up and ready to go. Right. And so by eight o'clock or eight 30, I've already fed all four parts of my nature. Now what happens is this morning that fight in me was already back. Everybody see that? So yesterday I had the shout knocked out of me, right? And then I woke up this morning and said, man, I'm gonna put the shout back in me, okay? And I don't need anybody else to help me with this. I'm gonna do it myself, okay? And then I started getting mad. See, when I get mad, my prey drive gets real activated. Does that make sense? And then I start playing a game. I'm like, I'll show that dude. Man, I'll make 40,000 in 10 minutes. Just, just to call him and say, you know what? I don't even need you 40,000, man. I made, made 40,000 in 10 minutes. Thanks to you, I just needed you to tell me you wanted to quit, to get me motivated again, to go get 40 more thousand. That's all I needed. And here's what it taught me. You don't need to be working on one deal. You need a hundred deals at one time. Everybody understand that? You don't need one flow of income. You need 15 flows of income. You don't need one strategy. You need 10 strategies. And so Sean, what I do is every day's a game to me. And I got X number of time and I got to get my mind, my body, my heart, my spirit ready to go into battle. Okay. Every day I'm going into battle. And I know I'm going to win some and I'm going to lose some. And it's going to be a fight. Like it's going to be a dog fight, man. But I'm going to walk out of there with, I'm going to walk out of there a champion. And even if I lose a day or get knocked down for a minute or lose a deal, I'm going to find another deal because there's 7 billion people on the planet. Now, how many people need solar? Okay. Now, now help me understand how many people need it. Everybody. 26 million homes in America. How many? 126 million. 126 million homes, folks. So there is no shortage of homes or people or human beings. There is a shortage of courage. There's a shortage of calling. There's a shortage of initiating. There's a shortage of confidence. So I used to be trained by this Marine, this former Special Forces Marine, and kind of my, my I got this Special Forces guy now that was in the Navy and kind of handles, you know, just security for me or whatever. And he's trained in non-lethal combat. Okay, and he, so last night I went out to dinner and he went with me. And anybody know what non-lethal combat means? It means he can kill you with his hands. He don't need a gun. <laughs> okay. And I was, I was trained by this former like Navy, not Navy SEAL, but high ranking Navy person. And he used to say to us every morning when we got to the gym, he said, ladies, we were all men, right? Four or five men come in. He called us ladies. He's like, it's time to get your, mind ready for what your body is about to do and he would put us through the most grueling workouts you can imagine folks and when i left there i was like let's go man there ain't nothing you could throw at me today that i can't fight through this if i was selling door to door that's exactly the way i would think it's gonna be a fight man every day it's gonna be a fight but i'm gonna find a way to win that would be my mindset every day um okay so so I think I want to, uh, I think we should pivot to this idea of going pro, which is something you talk about a lot versus like amateur versus pro, because I think that activating your prey drive kind of goes into this idea of, of how a professional athlete or somebody who's a, a true professional prepares for their game. Yep. And so uh, I wanted to see if you would just kind of talk about that in terms of what it takes. Cause I, I, I think that selling the way that we sell, whether it's door to door or initiating with, referrals and people that we know um you know it's one of those things where you got to get prepared for the big game but then there's like you said like uh the amateur versus pro it's like you have to be a pro if you're going to be successful long term in this so could you talk a little bit about that part of it about what it means to go pro versus being an amateur all right this, uh, is, this is a a great question because i think at some point in your life you leave your amateur desires behind and you go pro. Now you got to ask yourself, do you want to be a door to door salesperson or do you want to be the greatest in the world? Do you want to be one of the top people or do you want to be the top person? Cause somebody's the number one door to door person in the world, right or wrong. Okay. Do you want to be number 487 or do you want to be in the top 10? Right? Ain't nobody talks about number 487, folks. Now, I'm coaching the number 19 mortgage originator in the world. She's doing 44 million a month. Okay? She's doing like 180 million of production. If you understand the mortgage business, that's ridiculous. 
okay? She came back to me in year number seven, Sean, and she said, why, why should I hire you to be my coach another year? And I pulled up a ranking. I pulled up my iPad and I said, okay, let me just look at something real quick. Just give me just a second here while we're on the phone with each other. And I said, I'm looking at the top uh, 20 mortgage originators on the planet. And it looks like to me that you are number 19. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you want to be number 19 or you want to be number one? And she said, go ahead and sign me up for another year, coach. Now, here's my point. The woman's doing $180 million. That means she's making probably 2.4 million to 2.5 personally, but she still ain't number one on planet earth. What do you think I did when I said, made that statement to her, Mo Starkman? You know what I did? I activated that woman's prey drive. Absolutely. You went she's in. like, I will show you who number one is. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's what I showed her. That's what I did with her is I activated her drive. So this concept of going pro, Sean, is this, if Rebecca, if I ask Rebecca or Joseph, who's your number one artist that you follow? Okay, and they're gonna give me a name of a person. And I'm, I'm gonna say to you, or, or, do you think they feel like showing up and performing every night? Do you think they feel like singing the same song over and over and over? Do you think Journey feels like singing Don't Stop Believing after singing it for 47 years? No, they don't feel like singing it, but they sing it because they're what? Professionals. Do you think I feel like coaching everybody I coach in a day, which is a thousand some people a month? No. Sometimes I walk in unmotivated. Sometimes I'm like, dang, do I got to do this again? Right? But I'm a professional, man, which means I show up and I deliver every day. Do you think a professional football player feels like getting hit that hard on Sunday? Do you think a professional singer feels like singing a song? Do you think a professional actor feels like doing the scene again? So what I see is how does a professional in door-to-door -door look, okay? Now, I coached the number one uh, uh, insure, uh, real estate guy in South Carolina. He's a real estate agent. And I'd work with all kinds of real estate agents, and most of them are amateurs, right? They get up late. They sleep in. They drag around. They don't have a selling system. They don't prospect at all. They goof off all day long. And then I coached this dude. This dude showed up every morning at 8 a.m. He had a suit on, had his name initialed inside of his suit. He met with his team every morning at 8.30. He prospected every day from 9 to 11.30. Then he, then he would go eat lunch, always with somebody, never alone. He never ate alone. Then he would solve real estate problems in the afternoon. And I worked with him for a year as his coach. And guess what I said? This is a professional. This dude shows up every day and has a hard schedule whether he feels like it or not, which is why he was making 1.7 million a year selling real estate in a town of 7,000 people. Now, I coach so many amateurs. I'm like, man, you're amateur. You're amateur in your thoughts. You're amateur in how hard you work. You're amateur in how you follow up. You're amateur in how you ask for referrals. You don't have a good, you don't follow the script like you're supposed to. You don't have overcome objections like you should. Like, man, you're amateur. So therefore, you're gonna make amateur money. Big time professionals make big time professional money. Yes or no? And I have a rule, okay? If you're not earning a million dollars in personal income, you got a lot to learn, folks. Does that make sense? And I can only say that because I earn more than a million personally. Now, I'm telling you this because I was a high school basketball coach making $24,000 a year when I was 25 years old. I couldn't even get my mind around making a million dollars a year. Everybody see where I'm going with this? I couldn't even think, like if, you, like, like if Dan came to me and said, Coach, I think you make a million a year in solar. I would have said, I, why would I want to make a million bucks, man? I'm a high school basketball coach. Like, I'm, I'm good. I love my job. Love coaching kids. I'm making 24000 a year. I was that dude, just like you, that was a level 10 dude stuck in a level four opportunity. Everybody with me? Some of you guys are level 10 people, but you're operating at level four levels. And you got to figure out how to get in at level 10. Because that's, that's where the big money is. And it ain't all about money, by the way. It's really about potential. Money just follows activity. Money follows energy. Money follows high levels of action. It, it doesn't follow intelligence. It doesn't follow looks. What it follows is your ability to get up every day and work the muscle, even when you don't feel like it, and especially in your industry. You got to be able to hit it. It didn't work. Let me go back and hit it again in a different way. Let me go back and hit it again in a different way. Let me keep going until I find a way to do it. That makes sense? I'm going to replace that thirty or 40000 I'm going to replace it today. 
it just pissed me off that the dude told me he was going to do it and then he didn't do it. So, so guess what? I'm still fighting for it. I went back to him today. I, I'm still selling him, even though he told me no yesterday. I've, I've tried to sell him three different times today. Then I went to his number one person and sold him. And we're still in the fight, right? I still may get that 30 or 40 back. I just don't roll over and quit. And I think that's what a professional does, Sean. I think that's what you need. To, he told me no yesterday. We're not doing it. And you know what he said? We're already doing Tony Robbins. We're already doing Jordan Belfort. So I called him last night. I said, man, I've been thinking. How many times has Belfort called you? How many times has Tony Robbins called you? Have you ever talked to Tony Robbins? Has he ever called you and fought for a bit? Has he ever thanked you for the money you spent with him? That's what I hit him with last night about 9 o'clock. Then guess what? 7.10 this morning. I was calling him again at 7.10 this morning. Man, you know, I slept on a few things. Woke up this morning thinking something else. I want to call and let you know. Right? See, that's how a professional goes after something. They don't start and quit when somebody says, no, I don't want it. They keep, they keep finding a way to make it work. Before I uh, ask another question, is there anybody uh, that wants to ask something? Evan, you want to yeah, ask? I, um, <clears throat> so this is more of like a, a personal, and uh, we had, I had a chance to meet you, Coach Bird, and I've definitely been on, uh, personally on fire since we got together in Tennessee, so thank you for that. Um, I have a personal thing that I will do where I'm so motivated and so into it that I will run myself into a point where I need to rest. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, like, how do you measure that aspect of like properly, re you know, getting yeah. back up so that you can, so you're not like burning, you know, burning yourself out. Yeah. That's a great question. And it's, this has a lot to do with personality styles as well. Um, I want you to think of yourself like an athlete or an entertainer. Athletes rest, they practice, and they perform. And when they perform, they perform at very high levels. But they cannot perform at that level seven days a week. You never see an artist sing seven days a week because they can't. Their voice will go out. You never see a football, NFL football player uh, play seven days a week. What do they do? They play a game on Sunday. They rest on Monday. And then they practice for, for five days in preparation for the game. You everybody see that? I'm the same way. Like this, this week for me has been brutal, Evan. It has been brutal if you looked at my schedule. Different cities. But I have no scheduling on my schedule tomorrow. There is no appointments. There is no coaching. There is no scheduling. So what I do is I rest. I practice, which is strategy. And then I perform hard. And when I go hard, I go as hard as I can. And then I, and then I power down. And then I peak back up. And this is a cycle because I used to work seven days a week, uh, every week. And what happens is it's not that you can't do it. Your body can actually sustain that if you rest some. And, but, but here's the deal. You mentally lose your edge. So you get sloppy. And you get you irritable. Said and Saturday you, is like your day, right? Yep. Saturday is typically a day off for me. When I say a day off, man, it's a day off. I mean, I spend time with my kids, my wife. I bike, I do whatever I want to, Evan, that's the best way I know how to say it. And I have different hobbies than other people. I like listening to things and, and exercising a couple of different times. I just like having no schedule is my number one hobby, okay, <laughs> is that I ain't got nobody to coach or talk to. Well, here's my point. But during the week, man, Monday through Thursday, Friday, I'm going as hard as I can go. But I do take a break to, to peak. Just remember that peak state. You're going to be at your peak, okay? If you watch like the last dance with Jordan – you see Jordan would get into periods where he just would say, man, I'm just tired, man. Yeah, I'm just tired. He's, I'm beat down. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And he had to peak up. So he'd peak up and then he'd, right, then he'd peak up and then he'd come back down. And that's kind of how I want you to treat yourself as an athlete or an artist or entertainer. Rest is a critical component of this. You know, some of the top Olympians rest and sleep uh, as, as much as they work out because their bodies just cannot go at that pace for that long for the longevity of it. Okay, so that's an important thing for you to know. Good question. Coach, Coach I have a question. One of, the, one of the things that I find difficult is you're always talking about you have multiple products and multiple ways of following up. We have one product. Yeah. We have, we have one product and, and, and that's becoming, especially in the, in, the, in the realm of virtual, that 
people don't answer the phone. And it's yeah. not a matter of them not respecting you to answer the phone. It's just they just don't answer the phone. And yep. So we need some strategies from you for our industry. Yep. All right. So think of this. I What if I told you, Mo, that uh, I actually fight a lot of the same battle you do. We're selling a lot over the phone. And our salespeople make about 80 phone calls a day. And they would tell you that 70 of them don't answer the phone or 75. So we've come up with a, a, a number of other tactics, including video. We have cut, and Sean, I don't know how you can do this, but I think, I think it's a good thing for you to do is, Mo, what I've done is cut a series of voiceover videos, which are one minute long of me articulating or saying something. It, if I was selling solar, I would say, this is Coach Burt, I believe, this, I believe this, I believe this. Because of this belief, man, I went into the solar industry. And it's kind of a narrative, Mo. And, and we send those videos hoping that a person will click and watch a video and go, man, I like this dude. You know, and it's another touch. Because what it's really doing is allowing me to articulate my belief system to them. Like you have certain beliefs about solar. So it's another tag. All right, we take... Uh, my long form videos, like I just did a session this week on how to close people, right? And we use that in the follow up and we break it down into little chunks. And I say, send this out in your follow up to everybody you're trying to close. Just give them a little piece of it. So we use the video. So Sean and I can talk about what's the best way to help you with that because we may come up with some video series, real simple, little one minute videos, but with a little hype and se sexiness to them, right? So it's like movement, circulation, and the other thing I do is if I called you today, Mo, here's what I would do. I would call you first and you don't answer because that's typically what happens. Um, then I'm going to voice, then I'm going to maybe, uh, then I'm going to send you a video text and I'm just going to put my phone up and say, Hey, this is coach Burt. Mo, man, I'm trying to reach you. I got something real important for you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This right here. Hey, call me back when you get a chance. Right now I've called you. Now I've voice down video text you. Then I may use that other video I just told you, the short link, and send that as a third video. What I need is some collateral versus just calling people. I'm looking for a hook. Now, Mo, I got to go through. I may go through 100 people and do that and get four of them to call me back. Right? It's a law, it's a law of numbers. And my number is 16%. I think roughly 16% of people will be open and inviting to your idea. I really believe that. So I got to go through a lot of duds to find the studs. Okay. And I'm no different than you. We go through thousands of people. I've generated uh, 3000 leads in the last 90 days, Mo, but those leads are no value to me if I can't get them on the phone or push them to something. So that's a big strategy for me is phone, video, short video, video text, <clears throat> invite them to something long form. I just keep like, boom, 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 boom. And sometimes I'll leave a text message that man, I just left you an incredible voicemail. Just left you an incredible voicemail. Check it, call me back. And some of them do and some of them don't. My biggest contract right now, Mo, I worked for a year solid. The dude saw me speak, like me, and I called on him for a year. He wouldn't even answer. Never text me back. Every now and then, he would acknowledge a, a, a video from me and say thank you. Never said I like it. <laughs> Then one day, out of the blue, calls me, Mo, and says, like, hey, I got a problem. I think you can help us. He wanted me to coach one dude in the company. I turned that one dude into coaching 180 of his people. So we turned it into a six-figure contract. But it took me a year of banging on him to ever get him to call me one time. But when he called me, he's like, you're the guy, man. You've been following up with me like an animal. He's like, man, that's what I want my people to do, learn how to follow up like that. Good question. Now, um, I like what you say, you know, I'm going to follow up with you like a professional. Um, you know, I like, I like the words that you used. Um, there was one thing that I should have written down on my notes and it, it figures that that's the thing that I forgot. You had this one um, <clears throat> objection and rebuttal where, uh, see, because here's the thing. I have this customer that I'm talking to right now, and I'm trying to set an appointment with him, but 
I'm having a hard time with like, um, feel like I'm bugging this guy. And now you told me in Tennessee that that's actually a mental thing yep. that it's, it's up here in your head. You need to get that out of your head and stop thinking that way. Um, I can't seem to kick that. That's the, that's the problem. So I have this customer that I'm afraid I'm going to keep bugging. You had mentioned something about that. Um, I'm just trying to see if you can, I'm going to write it down. Um, yeah, you said something, Mr. Customer, you, you had shown interest in, you know, in the solar program and that's where I can't remember where the rest of the rebuttal was. All right. So what, what Dan is talking about is he spent three days with me at a boot camp I have called flip the switch and it's on prey drive. And here's what I believe. What he's talking about is called a consideration. And a consideration is I've already, I've got an internal fault that is prohibited. Notice he used the word afraid. I'm afraid. Anytime you start out of a conversation with I'm afraid, you're playing not to lose. But playing not to lose guarantees losing. If I call on Thomas or Rebecca, all they can do is tell me, look, man, don't call me anymore. I'm not interested. So what? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, so what? So, so, but, but, but what they could say is, Hey, I've been thinking about this solar thing. Thank you for following up with me for the last year. I'm ready to go. They could say that. So what I've done is I've removed any consideration I have. I don't know what you're thinking until I call you and ask you, I don't know. Right. And if I bother you, you can't lose something you don't have, man. So, so when you call on people and you say, well, I don't want to bother. I'm afraid I'm bothering them. Let them tell you that. Mm -hmm. Let them say, look, I'm blocking your number, man. Don't ever call me again. And here's what I'd say. Thank you. Thank you. Right? That's fine. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Sean already said it. there's 126 million homes to call on. It ain't like your career is hinging on one person. Right? Yeah. So, so, so my point is remove that consideration. Make the call. Now, I've taught Sean this. Sometimes it don't need to be about selling them anything. Sometimes you just need to say, how's it going? Don't need to be having trying to sell you solar again today. Especially now. It needs to be, how are you? Yeah. And, and that, that one thing will trigger in them. It's like, hey, man, I like that dude, Dan. I'm going to call him back. See, here's the deal. You don't know when I'm ready to make a buying decision. I may not want to buy anything from you today, and, and I may want to buy something from you six months from today. You don't know what the trigger event is. All you know is that you need to, you can control the stimulus, but you cannot control the response. So don't worry about the response. Some will, some won't. So what? Keep on moving. Mm -hmm. If I push, listen, I'm pushing this dude hard. He told me no yesterday. I, mean, I called him at nine o'clock, called him at 710 this morning. I called his number one lieutenant. All they can do is say, damn it, we ain't doing anything. And I'm going to say, okay, mm -hmm. surely you're not going to hold me. Surely you're not going to be mad at me for, for working this hard to earn your business, are you? Because I know Tony Robbins ain't called you. And, and Jordan Belfort hadn't called you. I like those dudes. But I guarantee you, have they called you? They will remember that. What if they come back to me four months from now and say, look, we got through our little phase. We want you back with us, coach. I want them to remember how hard I worked to earn their business. That's what I want them to remember, whether they do a deal with me or not. But what's that rebuttal that you, you had? Um, you said something like, um, oh, you had shown interest in, you know, in this case, solar. Um, I, always say, I always say on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about doing this? Okay. Right? You showed interest. The only reason I'm fighting this hard for you is that you showed interest in solar, right? It, I'm, I'm a professional and professionals follow up and good professionals make you think. Mm -hmm. right? now, now I can't help you to commit on this, but once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. I can't deliver like, like I'll send you Sean, my court, my closing course for you to send all these folks that I just did. If you, if you study the word close, uh, Dan, it means to bring two things together. Mm -hmm. It means to bring something to an end. That's what closing a person is. It's taking it from this never ending la la land to I'm bringing this to an end. I'm, I can't help you until we bring this to a close. So I say things like, it seems like you want to do this. It sounds like this is the perfect thing for you. It feels like, this is exactly what you've been looking for. What would stop us from getting started right now? Okay. It seems like this is 
what you've been looking for. Yep. It seems like, it sounds like, it feels like. That gets a person talking. Now, if I don't think they're moving, I may say, uh, Matthew, it seems like you want to do this, man, but you're stuck on one thing. Are, are you stuck on the price? I just try to pin him down, right? And he may go, yep, I'm stuck on the price. All right, somewhere between where I am and where you are, we got a deal. If it were free, would you do it? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, somewhere between free and where I am, we're going to put a deal together for some solar for you. That sound like a plan, right? It's confidence. And more than anything, it's just a confidence that, man, I can't help. I want to help you so bad I can't see straight. But I can't help you until we bring this to an end. <laughs> we bring these two things together. Okay? That's what closing is. I can't <laughs> deliver my service to you until, until we get a commitment from you. That makes Can you sense. Tell, yeah. Can you just help me with that uh, That the rest of that i'm sorry it seems like this is what you've been looking for and then what was what were you following up with it, what was that yeah and i typically end it seems like this is what you want to do it sounds like this is perfect for you it feels like this is what you've been looking for and okay. then i say and then i say what would stop us from doing it right now what would stop us from doing it right now okay anything that would prohibit you from doing it right now okay now i always say this um, if I could help you, like I have helped thousands of other people, what would stop us from moving forward right now? Okay, these are closing techniques. I write about these a lot in my book, Million Dollar Follow-Up, but they're phrases that I use to get a person to take action. Sean, we can talk about this right now. We can talk about it six months from right now, but you and I both know nothing's going to change between now and then. Now, I can't get you the savings that I could get you with this solar until you take action and we bring this to a close, man, right? Like you got to be able to, that's a little uncomfortable right there, creates a little bit of tension, but, but if you believe in your product or service, you got to have the guts to say it. Not sales flirt. Too many people sales flirt. Like, hey, if this is good for you, call me or here's my number or you got to say stone cold killer machine, man. You got to say, look, I can't help you to commit. Man. That's why I like Dan on a scale of one to 10. How serious are you about this? Now we've talked about this six or seven times. I'm, it seems like you want to do it, but you're stuck on one thing, man. Let's just address. Let's just get that one thing on the table and talk about it. Okay. Good question. All right. Anybody else have a question? I know we got a lot of new people on the phone. Is there anybody who has a question for coach? Nothing. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a question. Uh, how, what's the secret to keeping Ben and Joel healthy for a whole year in the playoffs? <laughs> oh Lord, that's uh. <laughs> I've got a question. That's a good question. I don't have the answer to that one though. I've got a question. So um, I've recently come on to a, a greater leadership role here. Okay. Right, and uh, I want to continue to challenge myself in my own personal sales, but my role has shifted to also, uh, you know, getting my, our team motivated and ready and uh, accountable, right? Um, is, there, is there a daily practice that you have for getting your team ready that's not, be, you know, beyond yourself? Yeah, I meet with my team typically three times a day. And I want you to understand that I'm coaching them to a system. So when you say they need accountability, the, the accountability I'm holding them accountable to is a structure that I've created, a sales structure, right? So it's activation of prey drive, explanation of service, generation of leads, million dollar follow-up, extraction of referral, person of interest. And so every day I'm coaching them to that structure. And I have certain percentages, certain numbers. You need to make 80 calls a day, 80 touches a day. You need, right, 16% of those. We need to measure it. We need to know where you are every day in relationship to your numbers. We need to, so what I'm doing is I'm meeting with them primarily for the most part, not just to, to teach Joseph, but it, but to reactivate their prey drive. That's really the number one job of the coach is, man, we had a long day yesterday. It was tough. We took a few, took a few licks time to get back in there and do it again today, guys. I believe in you, man. We can't do it without you. Okay. So right. never underestimate 
the need to re-enthuse people every day. Never underestimate the need. Never underestimate to engage with your customers at a high level. Never underestimate, <clears throat> when you, once you understand prey drive, you understand that, man, what takes years to build up and take seconds to tear down. Right. You have three bad days, man, some people are ready to quit after three bad days. Some people are ready to quit after one bad day. Mm -hmm. So you, you as the manager have got to transfer your confidence to your unit every day, just like a general is transferring confidence to the troops. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Coach, I guess, I guess the next thing, right? So uh, solar, solar is, is an opportunity that to make a lot of money, right? Uh, it, it's something that's very mission driven because, and it's something that I truly believe in. I believe that anybody who can't go solar should go solar. Beyond that though, I think it's, it's a different, it's a certain mindset that it takes to sell solar effectively, right? Right now, door to door is something that some of the guys are doing. It's something that we're slowly getting in with coronavirus, obviously on the East coast and the Midwest. Uh, a lot of our stuff's virtual, trying to get out there and initiate. Um, but I think that there's a mindset switch that somebody has to make where they're saying, hey, look, I'm not trying to make like 30 grand a year. I'm trying to make $200,000 a year. I'm trying to make 150. You know, I know Joe came in here and, you know, I think he had mentioned at one point he's making more money now that he's ever made. Uh, it's, it's affected me positively. It's affected a lot of people that really take it seriously and grab the bull by the horns. What was it that flipped the switch in you, right? You were a championship basketball coach, but you, you also mentioned you weren't making a whole ton of money. What was it where you, where you said like, no, you know what? I, I, I'm worth more than this. I've got to hustle hard. Cause I, I think you're the most motivated person. I said this to my wife. I said, coach, the most motivated person I've ever met. And I've met a lot of motivated people. Um, what was it that flipped in your, like what flipped the switch for you where you said, you know what? I, I got to leave something that I love doing. To, to pursue something else that, yeah, maybe I love it as well. It's still coaching, but trying to get into the big leagues and, and trying to make a million or two million or whatever, you know, single digit millionaire, soon to be double. Uh, what was that change that happened to you? Like, how, how would you talk to people that are new to this about how they got to shift their mindset in order to play at that bigger level at a higher level? Yeah. What, one of the best things you can do is, is get around people who are operating at a much higher frequency than you. And that's really what I started to do. I started to place myself around people that were no more talented than me, but were in maybe a better vehicle than me, or they had a bigger confidence than me, or they were better at marketing than me. So around 25 years old, when I wrote my first book, I was a high school basketball coach making $24,700 a year. I was working 80 hours a week, and I wrote a book to help other coaches, but coaches wouldn't buy it. It's a little discouraging, but business people bought it. And you can't sell a book if you don't have a book, right? And I had no idea where this book was going to take me, but I wrote a book and I went and I would speak. They would say, come speak. Well, when I spoke one time at Dell Computers, they paid me more in an hour than I made in a month. And that exposed me to something. I'm like, oh, man, these people over here will pay me a lot more money for my skill of coaching, right? And that activated my prey drive, but I wasn't ready to like quit coaching. I just wanted to explore how to do this more. So I wrote two books and three books and four books. And then I started to figure out that it's the same skill. I've been building a primary skill. Now you mentioned my book, Single Digit Millionaire. And, and in that book, I talk about the number one thing you need to do is grow your skill. Money doesn't buy you freedom. Skills buys you freedom. Because the stronger your skills are, the more money you're going to make. Does everybody see that? The money is in direct proportion to your skill. You, you, when we get off this call, you look up the number one door-to-door -door salesman in the world and see how much money he or she makes. Okay, who, who would you say it is, Sean? Is there a number one person? Uh, I would say in the solar industry, it's probably Michael O'Donnell, who I think is going to be at the coaching summit. Right. Um so Michael O'Donnell, I think, is known kind of as the number one guy in, in solar for door to door. And uh, I think I think for sure he he sells over a megawatt himself a year. And so I'd have to assume he's okay. getting pretty close at least to a million a year a year selling solar. So so, you know, the question then becomes, right, like like when you get around Michael O'Donnell, what's he doing? How's he doing? How does he do it different than me? What's he doing that I'm not doing? So I had this what flipped the switch in me 
is I, I, I really step, stepped back and re realized I had a primary skill that people would pay a lot of money for. Only, this is very important, because it would help them make a lot of money. Does that make sense? Like, like if I was helping Dan Teller make $4 million a year, he wouldn't mind giving Coach Bird a million of it. Right? But I would have to use my skill to help him make $4 million for him to be okay with giving me a million. And that's really what I figured out is that I figured out the coaching I was learning to activate the drive in people was very valuable to companies and groups because isn't that what everybody's trying to do? Activate the drive in all their people, right? And if we could do that, if we measure dollar for dollar, Sean, Sean Vernon, how much more money he will make with Coach Bird in his life versus Coach Bird out of his life, it'll be a significant amount of money. Will it be a million, two million, 10 million? We don't know yet, but we could measure that. Right? How much was he earning before Coach Burke? How much was he earning after Coach Burke? And if he says that dude helped me make a million more dollars and I only paid him X, then that's a good deal for him. So for you, you got to figure out what your primary skill is and how you leverage that skill into earning more income and building demand for that skill. Okay. That's really what door to door allows you to do. What is your primary skill? Is it connecting to people? Is it disarming people? Is it locating a problem for people? Is it, is it offering a compelling solution for people? Is it overcoming objection in people? What is your primary hard skill? And I guarantee you, if you said uh, Michael O'Donnell's got a skill, oh yeah, he's got a hard skill. And it's this, it's X. This is his skill. Some people's skills making money. Have you ever met people like that? Like they just have a knack for making money. Some people have a skill for making people laugh. You got to find your primary hard skill. And once I did that, my switch was flipped. And then, you know, I mean, I just, I, I did it. It just opened my eyes to a whole new world, man. Personal development, personal development opened my eyes to a whole new world. Cause I got around people who were so progressive and thinking so big and they had private jets and they had multiple homes. And I was like, dang, this is, this is interesting. And they're helping a lot of people. And I'm like, this is, this is where I want to be. I want to do something like this. My mentor was Covey. And Covey was never about money, by the way. You never heard, you never heard Stephen Covey ever talk about money, ever. But he, but he impacted, right, 30, you know, Seven Habits sold 30, 40 million copies. He, I mean, he impacted millions of people on the planet. And that was my number one mentor. So that's what, kind of the point you got to get to in life. All right, guys, any more, anyone else have a question they want to ask, Coach? So, uh, how long have you been working with these guys or, or, or working with people that sell solar? You know, my first introduction to door-to-door -to -door salespeople was at the door-to-door -to -door conference last year in Utah. And let me tell you something. I went with the lowest of low expectations you could ever imagine. I was like, you know, who put this on my schedule? And I'm going to speak to a bunch of door-to-door -door broke people. Like that was my, that was my thought because I'd never done anything in door-to-door. -door. So I literally was like, telling my team I'm like now why am I doing this and why am I speak like do that does anybody there have any money and I go speak at this with no expectation whatsoever and I, and I didn't I mean I just went up there and went as hard as I could and then 500 I, I made one statement I want to mint I'll mentor 25 people out of this group it's the first x number of people come over here we had no idea it was a last minute thing I decided to do right before I went on stage I'm like, I'm going to mentor 25 people in this group. And I told the group, anybody wants to be mentored by me, come see me over there. And like 500 rabid door-to-door -door people, like boom. And, and I looked at the person with me on my team, Chelsea, and I was like, dang, like, man, I love these people. Like, these are my kind of people because they're hungry. And so I, I became kind of fascinated with the door-to-door -door industry because it kind of shocked me, to be honest with you, John. It just shocked me how hungry y'all are and how, how coachable you are. And uh, I, I, I equated it to 10 X when I spoke at 10 X, the door to door conference was the closest thing to 10 X. When I spoke at 10 X, it was, it was like number two to that. So I, I want to do more work in door to door, you know? And uh, follow, one last follow up question. Are you considered a non-lethal weapon? <laughs> Probably. Did that rub yeah. off on you? <laughs> Sorry. Probably. Hey, if you ever see me with that dude, he's got a big goatee. Just be real careful when you're around me with that dude. <laughs>
I just want to know who uh, I should get on my team. That's all. Yeah, yeah. He's he he don't look he don't look he don't look like he could really hurt you, but he could. He looks like a big teddy bear, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't mess with him if I was you. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Here's something for you. Listen, if you if there's a day where you need to be insulted or you know to get your motivation up, feel free to call because you know those of us around Philadelphia we do this in our sleep so just anytime you need it that's what i love about the east coast man up there i love it i, I love philly i love jersey i love uh you know I, I, you, I don't know that you guys know this but i went to jersey once a month uh a year a couple years ago and coached investment bankers in jersey and man it was some of the best i had the most fun of almost any group i've ever worked with going to jersey once a month so uh, my, my southern accent works well up in the east, east coast it makes you sound very polite Yes, that's right. And friendly. I smile a lot. So good. Listen, I want to thank you guys for letting me be with you today. I've loved coaching Sean and Evan and uh, there's all kinds of things. Dan was a, a delight to have at my lodge for three days. I think if you ever want to do something with me, these three guys can tell you some of the stuff I do, everything from boot camps to coaching programs. Uh, Sean is at a, a higher end coaching program with me where he gets a lot of access to me and I'm coaching him and helping him build the team and, 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 you know, be a resource for him. But uh, there's all kinds of ways we can help you at all kinds of economical prices. I think a lot of people think coaching is very expensive. And what I've done is built a product suite that really fits everybody. I was on the phone with a young lady earlier and she's like, man, I just, I don't have a lot. I just said, tell me what you, tell me what you could do. Tell me what you'd invest. She said, I could invest 99 bucks a month. I'm like, okay, great. We'll get you started. We'll get you started at 99 bucks a month. That's what you want to do. And she's, she was so excited. She's like, I didn't even know you had a plan. Like, of course I do. I mean, we got all kinds of plans to fit all kinds of life where, where you are in your life. You know, I had to borrow money from my own mother when I was 25 years old to go to that Stephen Covey thing because I didn't have the money. Uh, so I get it, man. When you get started, you're, you're, you're trying to make it. So, you know, if there's a way I can help you uh, connect with Sean and, and, you know, we can, we can get you in something and get you rolling. Awesome. Yeah, they, they've been awesome, Evan and Sean. And also, Joe Sago has been incredible, too. So, um, but yeah, I, it was it was great being there, man. I was I got so much out of it. And I was like, so like, I was probably even more thankful after the fact, because before I, I went to Lodge, I would, didn't know what to expect. But I was more thankful after seeing how much knowledge you really have. And you know, Sean paid for uh, my family to go too, so they got a vacation out of it also. So it was, it was, it was amazing. So Good. I, thank you. I'm a heck of a guy, coach. That's what they tell me. <laughs> that, that's, the word, that's the word on the street. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I believe, I believe it's in there somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you. Guys, thank you for letting me be with you, Sean. Thank you for letting me coach the team. Uh, please you, coach. go to coachburg.com. If you don't do anything, follow me on Instagram. That'd be a good place to get started at Michael Burke. Spell it E-A-L, YouTube. I got 1,074 videos on YouTube. That's a good place to get you get you rolling, okay? Yeah, there's tons of podcasts, tons of stuff. Definitely start start following Coach, man. He's, he's, uh, he's made a major impact in my life. I say it all the time. He's changed my life. So thank you, Coach. I really appreciate your time today. Thank, right. you. thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.